Hello, my name is Mark Janot Jr. and welcome to the tech show about hacking. In today's video, I'm going to cover Flipper Zero, which is hack one of hackers' favorite tools to use to do their nefarious activities. So I'm going to cover some of the key features that it has. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So Flipper Zero is a tiny piece of hardware with uh, a curious personality of a cyber dolphin. It can interact with digital systems in real life and grow while you use it. Uh, explore any kind of access control system, RFID, radio protocols, and debug hardware using GPIO pins. No way. So it has a sub one gigahertz transceiver. This is the operating range for a wide class of wireless devices and access control systems, such as garage door remotes, boom barriers, IoT sensors, and remote keyless systems. Flipper has an integrated 433 MHz antenna and a CC1101 chip, which makes it a powerful transceiver capable of up to 50 meters range. It also has a customizable radio platform, which is the sub one gigahertz transceiver. This is the operating range for a wide class of wireless devices and access control systems, such as uh, garage door remotes, boom barriers, IoT sensors, and remote keyless systems. Flipper has an integrated 433 MHz antenna and a CC1101 chip, which makes it a powerful trans uh, transceiver capable of up to 50 meters range. Damn! The sub one gigahertz range. Uh, it's typically for like smart sockets and bulbs, IoT sensors, and doorbells. The CC1101 is a universal transceiver designed for a very low power wireless applications. It supports various types of digital modulation such as the 2FSK, 4FSK, the GFSK and MSK, as well as the OOK and flexible ASK shaping. You can, you can perform any digital communication in your applications, such as connecting to IoT devices and access control systems. Uh, and there's one more thing. Flipper uses 433 megahertz to communicate with other flippers out there, so you can make some cyber dolphin friends. So let's talk about the 125 uh, kilohertz, I don't even know if that's a word, uh, KHZ, okay? Man, these words, man. <laughs> 125K uh, HZ RFID, which is low frequency proximity cards. This type of card is widely used in old access control systems around the world. It's pretty dumb. Stores only N byte ID. Sorry, I wasn't trying to be mean. Uh, stores only N byte ID and has no authentication mechanism, allowing it to be read, cloned, and emulated by anyone. A 125KHZ antenna is located on the bottom of the flipper. It can read EM4100 and HID prox cards, save them to memory to emulate later. That's weird. You can also emulate cards by entering their IDs manually. Moreover, flipper owners can exchange card IDs remotely. This is one of the uh, two uh, features that I like about the flipper called Bluetooth. Right, you can connect to apps. Flipper Zero has a built-in Bluetooth low energy module, uh, as with other Flipper wireless features. So it will pro be providing an open source library for adding Flipper support. Uh, they're they're going to do this later in the Flipper device, okay? They're going to be adding uh, support for people uh, that run into issues. So the full BLE support allows Flipper Zero to act as a host and a peripheral device, allowing you to connect your Flipper to third-party devices and a smartphone simultaneously. The mobile developers are designing official iOS and Android apps to let you unleash Flipper's potential with a larger screen and greater control. So let's talk about the infrared transceiver. The infrared transmitter uh, can transmit signals to control electronics such as TVs, air conditioners, stereo systems, and more. Flipper has a built-in library of common TV vendor command sequences for power and volume control. This library is constantly updated by the Flipper community users, uh, uploading new signals to Flipper, uh, Flipper's IR remote database. There is the infrared learning feature. Flipper Zero also has an IR receiver that can receive signals and save them to the library so you can store any of your existing remotes to transmit commands later and upload to public IR remote database to share with Flipper users. 
um, next we have the micro SD card, external storage for apps and data. There is lots of heavy data flipper has to store like remote codes, signal databases, dictionaries, image assets, logs, and more. All this data can be stored on an SD card as well as user plugins. The SD slot will have a push push type connector. So the card will be reliably secured inside and won't stick out. Flipper Zero will support any FAT32 formatted micro SD card to store your assets so you'll never have to worry uh, the memory will run out. Nice. The card is not required for Flipper Zero to operate and it's not included. We have the I button, uh, which is the one wire keys to touch memory. Uh, Flipper Zero has a built in one wire connector to read button, a touch memory or Dallas key which is contact keys. This old technology is still widely used around the world. It uses the one wire protocol that doesn't have any authentication. Flipper can easily read these uh, keys, store IDs to the memory, write IDs to blank keys and emulate the key itself. Flipper has a unique contact pad designed on the corner. Its shape works as a reader and a probe to connect the I buttons uh, sockets. At the same time, this mod is also handy for si silently intercepting the one wire data line. So that is why hackers love using Flipper. Those kinds of uh, features enable various abilities, right? Did you think I missed anything? Do you have something better about the Flipper device that I didn't talk about? I wanna know your opinion. Please let me know in the comment section below. Please hit the notification bell. Please hit the subscribe button. I love you, stay safe. See you on the next video.